Hello and welcome to this quick tutorial on how to set up realistic reflections in Stingray. Now, one of the most important things for an environment to really truly sell itself is the reflections. So what I'm going to be showing you are some, some very nice tricks on how to get your scene to accurately reflect the environment that is around it and how to get um, screen space reflections to work in tandem with your reflection probes. So as you can see here, uh, as I rotate around this object, I'm getting that reflection to really follow those, those objects in their, in their view. Uh, and even if I were to go ahead and turn off screen space reflections, so here I'm going to turn off screen space reflections, uh, we're still getting very believable results out of our reflections on the floor. This is following you know, pretty closely to the object near it. But where that's really going to play uh, its, its hand is when we don't have the benefit of screen space reflections helping us. So in cases like uh, you know, looking at this metal object that we're going to be getting some of that yellow right here to reflect properly from the object behind it. Um, that just wouldn't be picked up by screen space reflections at all. In fact, if I were to turn on screen space reflections now, you'll see that we're not getting any benefit out of it from the screen space reflections. Uh, but we are getting that yellow, you know, highlighting in there. So these are the kind of things where you really want to set up your environment well and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that, all right? So uh, without, without belaboring it too far, let's go ahead and get started, and I'm going to show you how to set up a reflection environment that looks something like this. And here we have all of the reflection probes shown, and I'm going to teach you just how to do that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is go ahead and add the project to our, uh, our projects library here. Okay, so assuming that you've gone ahead and downloaded the sample project, and you've unzipped it and put it on your desktop, we're gonna go ahead and assume that that's where it's located. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go add existing, and we're gonna go to the desktop, we're gonna go to this reflections tutorials folder, we're gonna go into project, we're gonna go into garage, and we're gonna grab the garage.stingray project, okay? And we're gonna hit open. All right, once we have it open, it's gonna be listed here in our uh, Stingray projects. And now we can go ahead and open that project. Now, once the project is opened, you're going to come to this very blank screen, okay? So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go File, Open Level, and we're going to grab the Garage Level. Give it a second to launch, and once launched, we're going to be looking at this kind of black area. It just happens to be where the camera is located at the start, so we can just move forward a little bit and kind of come into our scene. All right, now we're going to see all these reflection probes uh, because I wanted you to be able to have the project as a complete reference. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and wipe all these out. And we're going to start to see what it looks like when we delete all these files. OK, so let's go ahead and now kind of wipe out these reflection probes. But before we do so, I just want to show you how to actually disable these so that we don't have to see the the balls in our scene, okay? So we're just gonna go view, and we're gonna go gizmos. Now that doesn't delete them, it just turns them off so we don't have to see them right now, okay? And now we can kind of see what the environment looks like when we're, we're completed with our project, all right? But like I said, the whole point of this is to teach you, so we're gonna actually wipe all of those out, and we're gonna start from scratch, and I'm gonna get you making an, an environment that looks just as nice. Okay, so as you may notice, my interface looks a little bit different than the way yours does. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and reset my layout so that it's exactly the way that you would have it in your windows. Okay, so now everything should look exactly as it does in your, uh, in your viewport. If it doesn't, do the same thing. Go window and then reset layout. And that'll get you looking at the same setup as I have. Okay. Now, in this Explorer window up here on the top right, what we want to do is we want to go probe, P-R-O-B-E, okay? And that's going to give us a list of all the reflection probes in our scene, okay? So if I were to go view and gizmos, you would have all these gizmos showing here. Now, once they're showing, all we have to do is go ahead and delete them. So up in this top right-hand corner, I'm just going to type probe, and I'm going to select all these uh, reflection probes, and I'm going to hit delete, and that'll get rid of them. Okay, now you'll notice that we're still having reflections showing on the ground, but that's because we have screen space reflections in, uh, turned on still. And what we wanna do to get turn that off is we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ENV in the search bar. We're gonna grab the uh, garage shading environment and we're gonna select reflection, screen space reflections and we're gonna turn off enabled, okay? So now we have uh, a blank scene with no reflections turned on whatsoever, okay? 
So now we have to start building out our reflection probes and making them kind of work the way we want to. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is start creating reflection probes, okay? So let's go ahead and go into this create panel and we're gonna grab reflection probe from the helpers menu, all right? And then I'm just gonna go ahead and hit, you know, click on the screen and that will place my first reflection probe. Now you'll notice that it's not actually doing anything yet. It's just reflecting this kind of blank environment. Okay, but we, what we want it to do is actually reflect the environment that's around it, okay? So what we can do is we can go Windows and Lighting and Bake Reflection Probes, okay? So that will give us a very base, broad reflection for the entire scene. But you'll notice that when we approach these, these pillars that we're not really getting a reflection from that pillar at all. It's just kind of giving us a blank, kind of wonky reflection. And that's because it's all emanating from the center reflection point, and we're not getting very accurate reflections whatsoever. Everything is kind of just a muted, kind of weird reflection. Like over here, if we look here, we've got like a pillar reflecting off of this, uh, this surface, which it wouldn't really do, right? So what we want to do is start to more accurately place these probes. All right, so the first one that we're going to want to place is this one. And we're just going to move it over to here, and we're going to move it over and up. Okay, so these are going to be our kind of global, broad uh, brush stroke reflection probes. So I'm just kind of moving it up into this area and kind of getting a, a general idea of where I want it to be. So I'm figuring that this will cover this kind of quadrant over here of my room. Okay, so I've got this kind of, you know, I'm, I'm kind of breaking the room down in my mind. Like I've got one quadrant that's here. I've got one quadrant that's going to be here. I'm going to have on this side of the room. I'm going to have a quadrant over here and I'm going to have a quadrant over there. And those are going to be my, my generalized reflection probes. Okay. And they're going to just kind of generally see uh, the room and cover up anything that is not perfectly covered by my smaller, more accurate uh, reflection probes. Okay. So let's just kind of get this a little better positioned. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking over here and I want to set these to whole numbers or very close to whole numbers. So like, you know, negative 3.5 is good. Um, I want my, my height to be uh, something like, or I'm sorry, the, the, the distance on the Y, I'm going to set that to 4.5. And I'm going to set this to something like 4.5. And now I've got them set to these nice, you know, round numbers that are easy to work with. Okay. And I know that I can make these duplicate on the other side very easily. Okay, so now that I've gone ahead and placed this uh, reflection probe, what I'm gonna to wanna to do now is start to set where it can see to and what area do I want it to reflect within. And I'm, I'm gonna be kind of concentrating on setting it up so that it fits within the quadrant uh, that I discussed a moment ago, all right? So what we can do is if we select the reflection probe settings, you're gonna see that we get these kind of uh, outside lines. So I'm just gonna zoom way out and I'm just gonna give you a, a show, okay? So what this is doing is it's showing where uh, some, some certain parameters are. And we can go ahead and click on these and drag them. And we can go to the side and drag this, you know, the side out. So we can drag this out. And there's two major boxes that we have to be concerned with. Uh, the first one is gonna be this guy. And as you can see, when we adjust this, it's changing our light box max uh, every time we slide this, okay? So we're sliding the light box max, now it's 15, and if I slide it in, it's gonna be 12, okay? So you can either set it by dragging these boxes, or what you can do is you can adjust it just by using the roller. Or if you know exactly where you want it to fall, you can use uh, whole numbers. So I could just go 11 and type it in and it'll, it'll plop it where it wants to be, okay? So that will adjust uh, this light box max. That's these these two first ones. So we're gonna have light box max and light box min. So the light box min is gonna be the opposite end. Okay, so if I were to grab this, it's gonna be moving that light box min and letting me slide it. Okay, so in general, what I do is I kind of just slide these guys to where I know that I want them to be. And um, then I, I get that whole number and I try to try to accurately place it so that it falls within uh, the space that I want it to. Um, so I don't want to kind of go through each one of these movements because it does take a while to just, you know, really accurately place these. But what instead I want to do is just show you the theory behind it, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of, for now, on this top one, I don't really want fall off, okay? So that's the last thing I have to still explain. So we have a thing called fall off, all right? So 
if you if you think of the yellow box as the distance that it can view to, the orange box is where it begins to fall off. So if it was a reflection, and let's say it was a, a reflecting the reflection upward, which it would be doing on this top plane, this is the farthest distance that that reflection probe can see to or reflect to. And this inside one is where it'll begin to fall off or blend with other reflection probes. Okay, so that's really important. And we're gonna get into more of that in a moment. But for now, just understand that this is how far the reflection can go. And the orange box is the, the beginnings of where it falls off, okay? And this blue box is where it is most sharp. You can almost think of it like focus. It's technically called parallaxing, but we're, we, we're gonna just use the idea of focus. So this is where it is most focused, okay? And that is gonna be this blue box, all right? So what I wanna do is I want the focus of this to be right at the top of these, um, of these windows, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that focus and I'm gonna move it right down to that window and I'm gonna find out exactly where that is, okay? So let's see where it is. It's gonna be like right about, right about there. Okay, so, so right about there. And this top one, we're gonna move down. And on this one, we don't really want to have fall off. So what we can do is on the Z axis, we can set it to zero of fall off, okay? And all of these are kind of big fall off. So what we're gonna, probably gonna do is just change these both to one. It, it also makes it a little easier to do your math when, you, when you're trying to accurately place them later. So I generally use either one or, yeah, I mean, two is good too. Uh, and we'll, we'll get into fall offs in a little bit later, but for now what we're just gonna do is work without um, a fall off on the Z axis. And we're gonna put this right down to that same height. Okay, so let's go down there and let's make sure that this is placed just nicely on the top of that, uh, on the top of that, okay? So we're just gonna make sure that it sits right on the top of those windows. Okay, and what that's gonna do is gonna allow the reflection to reach right up into these windows and give us a nice reflection on the top, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm not gonna belabor you with watching me sit here and click all these things. Um, but basically, I'm just gonna be moving these guys to be kind of centered on the center of the room here. I'm gonna move this one to be centered on the room. And you know I'm gonna go ahead and move this guy also to be kind of centered on the room. So I want this to be over here-ish and I'm gonna move this guy kind of here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this really accurately placed and I will see you in a moment when uh, I've got that done, all right? Okay, so now that I've got ahead and set up my reflection probe to where it fits just how I want it, let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm gonna grab the transform and then back to the reflection probe settings just so I get these boxes to show. And now I can see just how it's set up. So I've got my, my orange box basically filling the perfect quadrant that I want it to. So this is set right to the zero um, of the y-axis. This is set right to the zero of the x-axis. And we've got bleed falling into our zones of the other quadrants. Okay, so I've now got one quadrant nicely set up to really reflect that area. So let's go ahead and go window, lighting, and bake reflection probes. Okay, so when I do that, we should now see that we're getting moderately accurate reflections. And this is just from one reflection probe, okay? But notice that over in this area, we're getting no reflections still, okay? So what we're gonna wanna do now is fill out this same concept, um, only we're gonna wanna do it to the other four quadrants, okay? So um, rather than having you sit here and watch me do that, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the, pause the recording and I'm gonna go ahead and do all four of these quadrants and then we can take another look. All right, so give me one second and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I've got a reflection probe in each of the four corners of my room and I've got a, kind of a nice overall, you know, simple uh, reflection probe setup. So now all I wanna do is I wanna go window, lighting, bake reflection probes, and now we should see that we're getting, you know, much nicer looking overall generalized reflections. Okay, so this is gonna give us a very generalized, good overall reflection quality uh, for our room. And as you can see, it's, it's starting to look uh, pretty nice. You know, we're starting to get things to fall where they should. Um, we're getting kind of, you know, moderately good reflections and things are starting to shape up nicely. We've got some wall reflections happening now that are, that are pretty accurate, um, but we're still not getting very good reflections in places like here, okay? So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is start making our localized reflection probes, okay? And that's not gonna be very much different, 
Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and take a new reflection probe and we're going to go ahead and place it in our scene. Okay, so let's go ahead and plop one down. And this, the starting one, I like to just start with a very simple uh, setup. So I'm just going to go zero, zero, and I'm going to set my Z axis to something like one meter. Okay, or maybe even like 1.5 meters, maybe not even that, 1.5 two meters, okay? So um, what I really want to do is I want to make sure that I can kind of glide above all the stuff in my scene without making a big um, problem. So if I'm too low, like if I were to go here, I would be kind of overlapping on top of this, and I don't really want my reflection to probe to be inside of something, okay? So, and you'll see, I'm going to make kind of like a grid pattern here uh, happening in a moment. Okay, so what I've gone ahead and done is I've kind of just set up this, uh, this reflection probe to be about the size that I want it to be and uh, kind of the height and the depth that I want it to be. Okay, so again, it's just below the floor. I've got about a half meter of uh, fall off. I've got my parallax running right to the edge of the yellow this time because now we're going to be kind of overlapping stuff. So this is where it's going to really matter that this is kind of set up right. Okay, so just kind of take a look. And, and try to emulate what I've got here uh, when you're doing it in your scene. Okay, so as you can see, this is you know, basically just a nice little cube that I can now replicate throughout the scene. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go Windows, I'm gonna go Lighting, and I'm gonna go Bake Reflection Probes. And we're gonna see that right here, we're starting to get some very believable reflections. So now we're starting to pick up that guy right there, okay? But we're still getting those backgrounds to fill in uh, in those other locations. So this is the kind of idea that we want to do, but what we want to do is we want to do this localized to every one of these reflection probes. So we're going to make a whole grid pattern of reflection probes all across our scene so that we're getting very accurate reflections because the closer these are to something, the more accurate they become. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to kind of make a grid that lines up just to that edge and then, you know, duplicate it on the other side. So let's go ahead and do that once just so you can see what that's going to kind of look like. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this guy. I'm going to hold down the shift key and drag it out. Okay, and I know that because the, uh, the distance here is 2.25 uh, for each one minus the 0.5 for each one. So that's going to be a total of one distance difference. So if we were to go 2.25 times 2, that's going to be 4.5 minus 1, that's going to be 3.5. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this, and I'm going to set it to 3.5. Okay, and that doesn't really matter too much. That's just me being very careful. I like things to just line up perfectly. Uh, so if I were to go ahead and look at my reflection probe settings, here's really the important part, that this edge and this edge, when we uh, select this one over here, are gonna be exactly in the same position, okay? So I've got one plane lining up with the other plane. So the fall-offs start at exactly the same position, okay? And you don't really have to be this super accurate, it's just gonna be very beneficial if you do, okay? So, so now I've got two reflection probes working perfectly together that are allowing their fall-offs to find their, their um, exact same position, okay? So again, if I were to look at this one last time, this one's fall-off is ending or starting right there. So if we look at that orange box, there's the fall-off line right there. And if we grab this one and look at the fall-off line, again, it is exactly in the same position. And that's just by doing a little bit of math of knowing exactly how far distance they should be. Okay, so yeah, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to replicate this throughout the entirety of the scene. But even if we were to just look at these two for a quick second, um, I'm going to go window, lighting, big reflection probes. And we're going to see that we're starting to get really accurate reflections happening here. Um, even as I rotate around that pillar, we're getting very accurate reflections to occur. And the same thing over here. Okay, um, over here we're not because we still haven't set up our... our our grid pattern yet, but we will in a moment, okay? So let me go ahead and do that now, and I'll show you what it looks like when we're complete. Okay, so now what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've gotten all my reflection probes laid out, and what we can do is go ahead and do another uh, reflection probe bake. So I'm gonna go lighting, bake reflection probes. And now it's going to take a little longer because there's more reflection probes to bake. And we should see that we're getting very accurate reflections all throughout the scene. So I'm going to go ahead and go view and turn off my gizmos and just kind of take a look at how everything's working. 
So as you can see, we're starting to get um, you know much better reflections uh, all throughout our scene, and things are starting to really kind of look good. Um, you know, overall, uh, we're getting much more accurate reflections than we were before. Uh, we're getting things to line up pretty nicely. I mean, not everything is going to line up perfectly. Like as you can see right there, we're getting a little bit of a offset right there. But unless you're really looking for it at this point, you're really not going to see it. Okay. So, um, and that's kind of what we're looking for is to get that believability up. All right. Now, there's one other thing that we can do that will uh, dramatically increase the, um, the the benefit of all of the stuff we're doing. And it's a, it's a kind of easy thing to do that we can just turn on and uh, make it look good, okay? So um, again, we're gonna go back to the Explorer and I've already got it set to ENV, but I'm gonna delete and then go ENV and we can grab this garage shading environment and we can grab our screen space reflections. Now, if we turn that on, we're gonna see that it kind of overwrites a lot of the stuff that we did. Now, the benefit of this is that it's gonna be extremely accurate. Okay, as you can see, we're getting very accurate reflections now everywhere, uh, and it's really starting to look, you know, pretty amazing with the reflections. Um, but what it won't do is it won't be able to see any reflections that are not within its view. So if we were to go like over to here um, and do this reflection, we're going to see that we're getting very believable reflections on that door from the scene behind us. Okay, and that wouldn't occur with. Um, you know, even if we turn off screen space reflections, it's doing almost nothing here, okay? So all that work we did is really complementary to our screen space reflections. And now we're able to get, you know, very believable reflections whether we're looking at it or not. Because the way that screen space reflections works is it only is able to reflect what it sees within the current scene, okay? So whatever the camera sees, it can use as part of its reflection system. But if it's not within the camera's view, it can't reflect it. So if you have mirrors on the wall or anything like that, you know, that's where the reflection probes are really gonna come in handy. Plus, if you're looking down at the floor, here we're still able to get, um, I'm trying to find a good view, like right there, we're getting the reflections on the floor. And even with screen space reflections turned on, that is not doing anything. We're not getting that reflection from the screen space reflections. We're getting that from the reflection probes, okay? So you really want to do both. You want your screen space reflections to kind of fill in. And as if you look, you can kind of see it fading it in, right? So that's the screen space reflection right about here. And if I turn it off, you can see it's, it's doing something. It does a lot, uh, but it doesn't do everything, okay? So it's not getting these parts because, again, that's not seen by the above part. So unless it's visibly seen by the reflection, uh, by the screen, screen space reflections has no play. So screen space reflections is very accurate, but it's got its flaws and it's got its problems. So you really want to do both and make sure that both are working in tandem to make your scene look its best. Um, and as you can see, we're really getting you know very believable reflections now, and we're not getting any kind of really weird wonky stuff happening. And that just came because of a little bit of diligence and setting up your reflection probes and making sure you have a whole bunch. Okay. Uh, the more reflection probes you have and the more localized areas you have them in, the more accurate your reflections are going to become. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and conclude this tutorial. Uh, hopefully you were able to learn a bunch, and I do recommend that you play and uh, work in the scene to try to get a scene that looks you know, equally uh, reflectant and that you're able to get this kind of a, a look out of your scene. And uh, when you do, I think you're going to be on your way to making great reflections in Stingray. All right? So uh, good luck and uh, enjoy. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.